Today, let us have a discussion on ecosystem, components, energy flow, and the types. Introduction. Living organisms and the environment are two non-separable entities. Living organisms interact with each other and also with the physical environment present in their habitats. At the same time, physical environment also influences the living organisms. These organisms and the physical feature of their habitat form a complex which is called ecosystem. According to Convention on Biological Diversity, 1992, Ecosystem is a dynamic complex of plant, animal, and the microorganism communities and their non-living environment interacting as a functional unit. An ecosystem has its basic components, structure, and the functional processes. Components of ecosystem. Each ecosystem has two main components, abiotic and the biotic components. Abiotic components are the non-living components or the physical environment prevailing in an environment. This component has a strong influence on the structure, distribution, behavior, and the interrelationship of living organisms. These components consist of the following. A. Inorganic substances such as carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, etc. that are involved in material cycle. B. Organic compounds present either in biomass or in the environment, for example, chlorophyll, carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, etc. C. Climatic factors that prevail in the area, such as rain, temperature, light, wind, humidity, etc and D, edaphic factors, such as soil profile, topography, soil pH, etc. The biotic components are the living components of the ecosystem. At the basic functional level, this component contains primary producers, consumers, and decomposers. Primary producers are plants, which are capable of harvesting energy from sunlight through the process called photosynthesis. Primary producers turn carbon dioxide with other inorganic chemicals in the organic building block of life. The consumers feed upon this capsule energy. Consumers could be primary consumer, also called herbivores, or secondary consumers, also called carnivores. When the primary consumer feed on plants, or secondary consumers feed on primary consumers, energy and the material are transported through food chain. Decomposers work at the bottom of the food chain by breaking up the dead tissue and the waste products that are produced at all levels. They are the microbes that are responsible for decomposition of organic constituents that can again be used by the producers. These interactions among the producers and the organisms which consume and the decomposers are called trophic interactions. This interaction is composed of trophic levels in the energy pyramid and can be represented in the food chain. Different components of the ecosystems can be represented by this diagram. The ecosystem can be divided into abiotic components and the biotic components. Abiotic components can be broadly categorized into climatic components and edaphic components. Climatic components may be divided into rain, light, wind, temperature, etc. Edaphic components, that is soil components, may be divided into soil, pH, minerals, topography, and more. Biotic components is a living component, and it can be broadly divided into producers or autotrophs, consumers or heterotrophs, decomposers or separotrophs. Consumer can be again divided into primary consumers or herbivore, secondary consumers or primary carnivore, tertiary consumers or large carnivore, and the quaternary consumers or omnivores. Functions of ecosystem. Ecological processes or function are the biological, geochemical, and the physical processes that occur within an ecosystem. Basically, all ecosystems cycle matter and they use energy. 
These processes define the fundamental ecosystem functions. In an ecosystem, capture of light energy and the conversion of inorganic compounds to organic compounds by producers, their consumption by consumers, and the subsequent degradation into component elements by decomposers are the basic functions. These functions occur through two major processes of energy flow and the mineral cycling, involving interaction between physical chemical environment and the biotic communities. Through its functional process, each ecosystem produces and accumulates organic matter over time. It is called productivity of an ecosystem. Productivity may be primary productivity associated with producers and the secondary productivity associated with consumers or heterotrophs. Primary productivity may be gross or net. Gross primary productivity is the total amount of organic matter that it produces through photosynthesis. Net primary productivity is the amount of energy that remains available for plant growth after subtracting the fraction that plant use for respiration. Energy flow. The behavior of energy in ecosystem is called energy flow due to unidirectional flow of energy. It refers to the flow of energy through a food chain. Energy flows occurs in the following sequences. Number one, solar energy is fixed through photosynthesis by primary producers, usually green plants. Number two, primary consumers absorb most of this stored energy in the plant through digestion and transform it into the form of energy they require through respiration. A part of energy received by primary consumer is converted to body heat, which is radiated away and lost from the system. Energy loss also occurs in the expulsion of undigested food by excretion or regurgitation. Number three, secondary consumers consume the primary consumers. Energy stored in the primary consumers are then absorbed into the secondary consumers through the process of digestion. Some of the energy is converted into more suitable form during respiration. Some energy is lost from the system as body temperature and excretion, that material, etc. Number four, tertiary consumers then consume the secondary consumers with some energy passing on and some loss. Number five, the final link in the food chain are decomposers. They break down the organic matter from consumers and the producers and they release the nutrients into the soil. In the process, they also obtain some energy and the some are released into the system. In this diagram, the producers fix the energy from sunlight and the some of the materials are transferred to consumer through food chain at the same time, the producers release some of the energy as heat and the consumer also release some of the energy as heat and the matter and the energy are again transferred to the decomposer and the decomposer also obtains some of the material from the producers also and the decomposers by their activity release some of the energy as heat and some of the de decomposers also release the inorganic nutrients by the decomposition process. These inorganic nutrients are again absorbed by the producers and in this manner, the materials are cycled while the energy are lost as heat and this loss of the heat increases the entropy and here it follows the second law of the thermodynamics. When energy is passed from one trophic level to another trophic level, high percentage of the energy is lost Processes that reduce the energy transfer between trophic levels include respiration, growth, and the reproduction, defecation, and the non-predatory death. On average, about 10% of net energy production at one trophic level is passed on to the next level. Approximately, 
primary consumers get about 10% of the energy produced by autotrophs, secondary consumers get 1% and the tertiary consumers get 0.1% of the energy. It means that the top consumer of a food chain receives the least energy. As there is loss of energy at each level, typical food chain have limited links. Because of these energy losses, most terrestrial ecosystems have not more than 5 trophic levels, while marine ecosystems generally have not more than 7. This difference is likely due to differences in the fundamental characteristics of land and the marine primary organisms. Energy does not have cycle, while materials have cycle. As such, ecosystems need a continuous inflow of high-quality energy in order to maintain their function and structure. Energy flow in an ecosystem is based on two laws of thermodynamics. Number one, the first law of thermodynamics. It states that the amount of energy in the universe is constant. Energy can be transformed from one form to another, but can neither be created nor destroyed. Light energy cannot be created or destroyed, but can be transformed into another type of energy such as chemical energy or heat energy. Number two, the second law of thermodynamics. It states that change of energy from one form to another takes place in such a way that a part of energy assumes unusable form. Total entropy of an isolated system always increases over time. In the energy flow, entropy increases through various loss of energy from each trophic level. Material cycling. It is the movement and the exchange of organic and inorganic matter back into the production of living matter. The process is regulated by food wave pathways. The cycling of minerals occur through different biogeochemical cycles superimposed upon the unidirectional energy flow through the biotic component. Movement of mineral nutrients is cyclic. The process includes carbon cycle, sulfur cycle, nitrogen cycle, water cycle, phosphorus cycle, oxygen cycle, along with other mineral nutrients into productive ecological nutrition. Types of ecosystem. There are many types of ecosystem. On the basis of the habitat, ecosystems can be categorized into following major classes, which are referred to as biomes, terrestrial ecosystems, and aquatic ecosystems. Terrestrial ecosystems. These ecosystems are found in the landmass of the earth. As there are various types of places on Earth, we find different types of terrestrial ecosystems. Important primary terrestrial ecosystems are tundra, taiga, temperate deciduous forest, tropical rainforest, grassland, and the desert. As the terrestrial ecosystems are so diverse, it is difficult to make generalizations about them. Aquatic ecosystems. These ecosystems are based on water and they can be divided into freshwater ecosystem and the marine ecosystem. Freshwater ecosystems are those that are contained in freshwater environments. It includes ponds, rivers, and other waterways that are not the sea. It accounts for only about 1.8% of the total of the earth's surface. A pond ecosystem exhibits a self-sufficient and a self-regulating system. Marine ecosystems are contained as about 75% of the earth is covered by the sea. Base of the food chain is plankton, 
These planktons and the other plants that grow in the ocean close to the surface are responsible for 40% of all photosynthesis that occurs on Earth. Cropland Ecosystems Ecosystems described above are natural because they all operate as self-regulating systems without much direct interference and the manipulations by man. By contrast, there is another kind of ecosystems that need interference by man. These are cropland ecosystems, which are artificial ecosystems. Here, man manipulate physical chemical environment to grow selected species of one choice. Conclusion. An ecosystem is an overall integration of different interactions, organisms, and their environment with a complex process. It is an open system with a continuous but variable flux of energy and material. The interactions of biotic and abiotic components is necessary for maintenance of life on Earth. Ecosystem is energy-based integration and responsible for energy transformation, accumulation, and circulation. Understanding the intricate balance and the relationship among different components of ecosystem is necessary for management and the monitoring of natural world.